Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today with the next resistance level and the second in order is the AC, or it is also called dynamic. Dynamic. Di N A. M I C dynamic resistance. Okay, now in the previous video we saw what? That a DC source, that we had a DC source. Now, if a sinusoidal input is applied, so what happens to the resistance? So let sinusoidal input. Okay, when we apply AC input in place of DC, the input will vary and will move the instantaneous point. So, what happens if you are uh, having a varying input? So this would result in a varying output. And varying output means a varying instantaneous operating point. Okay, so now I, I will explain it over here. And this marker has turned black. I told you in the previous video by mistake I've put the blacking inside it. Okay, so that's not our topic. Okay, let's say the blue color represents well, this isn't blue, but you just have to assume it. Okay, or let me if I have if this other blue is working. Oh, yes, it is. So For the figure, I will use this one. So this is, let's say, the original Q point, okay? This blue represents the Q point. And now what do you do? Let's say, let's say, you provide a sinusoidal input. So a sinusoidal input is like this. So let me draw the first portion of it. So, and also let me draw the lines all right so over here so a sinusoidal input is applied so for a small value or change of voltage we have a large change of current this is the black so the Q point has moved to this point now this is q1 let's say okay so from q it has moved to q1 in the first part of it now let's say the blue color it has to come back to zero so the current also comes back to zero like this and what do you have the q point has again came to the original point that is the q point now it will go down for the negative half cycle like this. No, no, not, not a full half cycle. So, so to the half of the negative cycle, it will have like this. And which means now the Q point has moved down. And this has now come to Q2. So let this be the Q2 point. Now what happens again? Like this. So this completes. And it again goes to the original Q point. So like this, it is changing instantaneously with respect to time. So if I redraw it, if I redraw that part of it, redraw. So this is if the original Q point, right? And this is the slope. Uh, so this is quite, the figure is like this. Yes. So what do you have? Uh, not like this. Let me draw a proper one. It is just a little vertical uh, like this. Yes. So if this is the Q point, this a, uh, over here we have the Q1 and over here the Q2 point. So let me draw a what? A tangent through this Q point. This is the original Q point. So we draw a tangent through this Q point like this. Fine. Okay. So this is a tangent and this 
perpendicular property this represents what the change of current and this horizontal one this represents what this represents the change of voltage vd all right so this is the figure which i have redrawn so let me uh, read out some points from the book or first let me write that the resistance you know is vd by id but the slope over here is uh, id by vd so this implies what that the slope is equal to 1 over rd fine and look for the notation small r okay for ac quantities so what do you have the varying input will move the instantaneous operating point up and down in a region that specifies a certain level of current and voltage okay the designation Q is derived from quiescent. I've told you in the previous video. A straight line drawn tangent to the curve uh, will define a particular change in voltage and current. All right. So this is used to find out the AC or the dynamic resistance. And the formula is given. Where delta specifies a finite change in the quantity. So uh, I did a mistake. Over here. This is delta. So this specifies the change, all right? Now the steeper the slope, the lower is the value of Vd for the same change in Id and thus lower the resistance. So the steeper means the more it's vertical. So the more it's vertical, if this comes over here, so smaller the value of Vd and higher will be the resistance because the current level is the same. The AC resistance in the vertical rise region of the characteristic is quite small, whereas uh, H is much higher at lower current levels. That was also for the DC. In general, therefore, the lower the Q point of operation, smaller current and voltage, the higher is the AC resistance. So the lower the Q point, the higher is the resistance. All right. The lower the Q point, lower the Q point. This implies higher the AC resistance or DC or whatever the resistance. Now generally, generally we use what? The formula is used for the slow for calculating the resist the, uh, the resistance RD in the uh, AC, all right, AC or dynamic resistance, and that formula is a 26 millivolts over ID. Now, where did this come from? So I ha have to prove it for you guys and let me prove it, all right? Because we we don't need the proof, but it's better for understanding, all right? So let this be. Now, let the diode current equation was what? ID is equal to diode current. ID is equal to IS exponential of eta uh, Vt upon Vd, this I will confirm, minus 1. Eta, up, no, Vd upon eta Vt. Vd upon eta Vt. This we know, all right? Now what do you do? You differentiate it. Differentiate it with respect to, let the other colors go. Differentiate. with respect to vd all right so and i also multiply this inside so i have the differentiation with respect to vd of id and this equals the differentiation with respect to vd of uh, is exponential of vd by eta vt and then we have the different uh, def, uh, derivation of yes the differentiation i was saying over here so this is wrong the derivation all right and this proper this is the full derivation d all right i just draw the sign like a partial one so d uh, v d of uh, i s now i s is a constant and the derivative of any constant is zero so so this term will vanish out to be zero because 
derivative of constant is 0 and what is this constant? I s is this constant. Okay, now, now this part of it. So, I s is constant, it will come out of the derivative. Okay, we have uh, the, 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 the what? The left hand side is the def derivative of d i d versus v d. I s is a constant, it will come outside. Now, the derivative of the exponential function is like this. d, if you are doing it with respect to x, exponential a x. You have any other terms a, so this would equal to a exponential to the power, exponential of a x. So, you bring this a outside. Here we have what? Here a is equal to a is equal to 1 upon eta v t. Right? So, you bring that a outside, you bring that a, so you have an eta v t over here, an exponential of a x again, so the same v d over eta v t. All right. Now, if uh, this is equation number one, let's say, if this is equation number one, so if I uh, multiply it inside, okay, uh, so let me remove this because this blue, this is blue, but if it's not colorful, so then it does not work proper. We don't understand it. So ID is equal to IS exponential of VD upon eta VT minus IS. So ID plus IS is equal to IS exponential of VD upon eta VT. So isn't this IS? So I will put the values, okay? So DID upon DVD is equal to, this is ID plus IS. And over eta VT is the same. Okay, now IS, ID is uh, comparatively larger. ID is very large as compared to IS. So ID plus IS, we can approximate it to ID. So over here I can write ID over eta VT. Now if you invert this relation, invert. So what do you have? D VD over D ID. So this is eta VT upon ID. And we assume eta equal to 1 and VT equal to 26 millivolts. Now how is this VT 26 millivolts? This is the voltage equivalent of temperature. We've seen that in the previous videos. All right, I believe in the barrier potential or in the width of depletion region that VT is 26 millivolts. Eta we consider 1. So this D, D mean, the derivative mean, the change of Y with respect to change of X. So this is the change of V upon change of I which is equal to uh, 26 millivolts by, uh, by ID. So this we have proved, all right? And this is what? This is the value of the resistance of the diode, which is the AC resistance. So hence we have proved it. It is 26 millivolts by ID. So let me see if we have some points in the book okay the derivative is this and this and that and that so I think I've said it all but it is important to keep in mind that this is accurate for uh, only for values of ID in the vertical right section of the curve in the vertical right section of the curve, this is valid, all right? For lesser values of ID, eta is equal to 2, all right? Eta is equal to 2. This is valid. This is valid for vertical rise section only. 
Okay, and what do you have for lesser values of ID? What do we do? Eta is equal to 2. So you need to do it over here. Eta is equal to 1 I considered. So you consider eta is equal to 2. So you have the same 26 multiplied by 2, 52, all right? So that's about it. When id is small, eta is not equal to 1, eta is equal to 2. This equation is not valid near the knee. And near the knee, this is not valid. The knee is what point? This is the knee. Knee, all right? And this equation is not valid near the knee. This is for the vertical rise section or for a little smaller values of id below the knee also not valid. So that's all about it. That's all about the AC or the dynamic resistance in the next lecture with the with the average AC resistance. All right, which I believe I cannot cover today. I'm a little tired. So till the next lecture, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.